Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems. It's Technical Tuesday. We're in like our third backup video space because everything else is occupied and we kept getting kicked out. So we're gonna do a quick video. Pardon the background noise. We're actually on the shop floor in a little mini conference room. I wanna talk about firing pin assemblies. I'm gonna give you a real quick history lesson on our parts. And then also we're gonna look at the, a, a common mistake that we see when people put them together, which can impact your reliability. All right, so come have a look here at what's on the table. Uh, this firing pin assembly would be an early generation Shadow Systems firing pin assembly. It would also be one that's the most clo close to a, just a conventional Glock part. You'll always see a black spacer sleeve on one of our bladed firing pins. So as a reminder, we now use and have used round uh, tip firing pins for, uh, well, really since like 2020. So these are gonna be the older generation pins, or if you were to buy like a parts kit from Shadow Systems, you would also see this style pin with a rectangular tip. Those always have a black spacer sleeve, okay? Then we've gone through a couple different iterations of finish. Um, all of them are 17-4 stainless steel that's machined and heat treated. We added a coating, like a nickel Teflon coating, uh, about a year ago probably, just to make things a little smoother. So this is a CR920 firing pin that is silver in color. It has that nickel Teflon coating. This would be like an older generation uh, MRDRXR firing pin but they're the same material. It's just this is as heat treated and this is with the coating, okay? The spacer sleeves are also different. So again, black on the old bladed style, but the newer generation are gonna either be gray or green. There's been some design revisions, but they're all interchangeable. Uh, there's nothing really special there. You'll see either a green or a gray in a CR or a DR MRXR pistol, okay? They all have the same spring cups. They all have the same uh, firing pin spring. So again, the differences are obviously the pin, the spacer sleeve, and then pins that are older generation, there's no spring there. You don't see a little tiny spring in, inside that uh, space there. But the round tip firing pins, you will see the firing pin return spring. So just as a reminder, all of the round tip firing pins have that additional firing pin return spring inside the assembly. Okay, now I'm gonna show you just a uh, a common mistake that people make when they put these things back together. So I'm gonna take it apart really quick. First, you've probably seen this trick. You grab a slide, turn it upside down. Uh, I'll take this one apart. If you put the firing pin assembly in at an angle like that, the lug will hit the back of the slide and it's a great bench block. So make sure you don't put it in there like this. It's not helping you. Put it in there, turn to the side, and you can see that it's supported. Okay, now I'm gonna pull it apart. All you do is you grab it and you take your, your uh, spring cups off and then here comes the firing pin spring. Quick side note, so our firing pin springs are flat ground on the end, okay? Springs and firing pin assemblies for this style handgun should be. You'll see a lot of aftermarket springs aren't flat ground. It's not ideal when they're not. They really should be flat ground on the end. It makes the spring pressure more even on the spring cup. So just something to look out for if you're looking at aftermarket springs. Ideally, they are flat ground. They, they really should be, okay? So there's the spring cups, they came off. Here's the firing pin spring. Now here comes the assembly, and you'll see that firing pin return spring is hiding down in there, okay? The firing pin return spring is the last thing to come off, so it's also the first thing to go on, okay? So there's all the parts, okay? Let's put it back together. All right, so I'm gonna grab my firing pin, obviously. I put my firing pin return spring on first. Here comes the spacer sleeve. That notch goes over the lug. Okay, now I can put it in the slide. All right, I'm gonna put the spring cups on, and then I'm gonna show you the mistake that people make. So I'm gonna just grab the firing pin spring, put it on there kind of any which way to start, pull it down, grab your spring cups. There goes number one. Here comes number two. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but when we're done, it should look something like that. Most people would say that they're now done. Okay, you're not done. You wanna make sure that the end of the spring, cause right, you can see kind of right there, the spring is ending right there at that location. You wanna make sure the end of that spring is terminating somewhere midpoint on the spring cup. So as a reminder, it's two halves. You don't want that spring to terminate on the crack. You might be able to see it there a little bit. It's misaligning the spring cup, okay? Conveniently, Shadow System spring cups have a dot on the side, which you might be able to see. We'll show you a picture. That dot is a wonderful target for you to, to aim for when you install the spring. So what I do is I just put it on and then you just kind of give the spring a twist until the end is terminating near that dot. 
That just guarantees that the spring cups aren't going to get misaligned and add some friction to the firing pin during its travel. Okay, so light strikes, right? Those are the kinds of things you might see. You just want to maximize your firing pin's energy and have it free moving. And so make sure you don't put the end of the spring on the crack, okay? Um, only other comment would be a lot of people are trained to check uh, for free firing pin movement. So they'll take the gun apart, they'll take the slide off, they'll hold down the firing pin safety to free up the firing pin, give it a shake. Just a reminder, if it is a Shadow Systems round tip firing pin with a return spring, it's not gonna move. It's, it's held to the rear by the firing pin return spring. So to check for free firing pin movement, all you do on a Shadow Systems gun is you hold it down and just push on the back of the firing pin and you should feel it move very smoothly and it should spring back up on its own, okay? All right, that's an overview, just some stuff to watch out for. As always, let us know if you have questions and we'll see you next time.